All right, we have a very special guest with us today. She has been a QS campaigner for over a decade now, finishing sixth in the European region last season. This year, she qualified for the 2024 Paris Olympics at Teahopu, becoming the first German women surfer ever to qualify for surfing in the Olympics. And she'll soon be competing at the German Surfing Championships from October 11th through the 13th at a new wave pool, the O2 Surf Town MUC in Munich, Germany. We have Germany's very own Camilla Kemp with us. Camilla, thank you so much for coming on the lineup. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Now, we talked about a little bit before we started recording, but we're obviously not in the same time zone. Where are we talking to you from today, and what have you been getting up to? I am currently in Portugal. I, I do live in Portugal. This is my home base. Um, I compete for Germany, but I do live in Portugal, and I've competed for Portugal as well for a couple of years. Um, so Portugal is definitely part of my history. But I'm actually here right now for the Challenger Series um, in Irisaira. And yeah, stoked to be home, stoked to have some good waves on offer for the next few weeks and uh, just going to enjoy enjoy surfing on the WSL Challenger Series for a little bit. That's excellent. So that EDP Arisera Pro, it's the penultimate Challenger Series event for the season. You mentioned there's, looks like there's some good waves for the event. What's the, what's the vibe and how do you yourself prepare for an event like that? For me, it's uh, it's gonna be a fun event because I'm not I didn't do the whole season of the Challenger Series this year since I qualified. I um, yeah I decided I would just focus on the qualif- on the Olympic Games and mm. preparing for such a difficult wave like uh, Tiaupo. So yeah, I decided not to do the Challenger Series events this year. So this one will be my first and my last. So I feel like I can go in just as a dark horse and try and perform, um, put my best surfing um, on the screens and, uh, yeah, um, surf Portuguese waves, which I love. (laughs) I'm glad you brought up the Olympics because I think for all surfers in that position this year, you know, when you start 2024, you're like, all right, I'm a professional surfer. Here are my opportunities. I'm working with my sponsors. Maybe I'm going to do some training, maybe some free surfing, some competitions. You continue to surf on the, the, the qualifying series in Europe. But as you said, you have that Olympic event middle of the year in Tahiti at Teahopu, one of the most difficult waves on the planet. At the start of 2024, how did you kind of keep it all organized in your head in terms of like, I'm going to do these things? Or do you kind of prioritize it where Olympics is priority one, these things are two, three, four, or or do you just kind of take it week by week? Yeah, um, I started the year um, 2024 with a bunch of goals. I obviously wanted to. I was very, I was in a very good position to qualify for Challenger Series after I did a final in Spain in Pantin, second place. And that was actually my main goal, I have to confess. <laughs> I really wanted to be on the Challenger Series, but that all kind of shifted when I qualified for the Olympics. So mm. um, it was a, the biggest dream come true. Um, it was a huge thing for my federation, for my country, uh, being the first female German to surfer to qualify for the, for the Olympics. I knew it was a big deal, and it was a, a huge dream for me to come true. And I think... Um, so that was very easy to then shift towards that goal and prepare. I knew it was a wave that was an, um, that was definitely out of my comfort zone. It's a wave that is super scary, that is um, not of has been surfed um, by female surfers for that long. Mm. And uh, I knew that I had to prepare and and um, I had a, a good team behind me and they helped me prepare and helped me set my goals. And I think that was when the shift came from, okay, I want to qualify for a challenger series to so, know I think I have to prepare for the Olympics and see this as a yeah lifelong dream come true and actually live it out, live the whole journey of the Olympic Games. And that's what I wanted to do. It's awesome. And one of the very cool things about seeing surfing become an Olympic sport, as you kind of hinted at there, like is the support of the the national federations getting behind surfers, training with them, supporting them in their goals. With a wave like Teahopu, had you, before you qualified, had you ever been there and surfed there? And then in the lead up to the event, is that something that the, the German federation, the national team supported you in going out there to prepare for it? Did you take any trips before you actually had to put the Olympic jersey on there? 
Yes, we had uh, we had we have amazing support from our federation. They really have put in a lot of work in German surfing, which is funny because Germany is not the, the <laughs> surfing country, a surfing country, and to actually have the support from them and have such a special team around us is amazing. Also, our team bond. So our our surfers, we're very, we're just like a little family. We stick together. We support each other, and that's a. Uh, I think that's what's been bringing the results as well for surfing in Germany. Mm. And um, yeah, we had uh, two trips to Tiaupu, which was good. Um, I was very fortunate that I wasn't doing it alone. I was doing it with Tim Elta, my uh, my fellow teammate. Um, and we had Didier Pite, which is a f- amazing surfer, former competitor. He has competed in Tiaupu a bunch of times. So we had that and we had Martin Voss also helping us out with all the sports psychology around it, everything that we needed. And we had a quickly, I think we had a really good team to, to try and do the best out of the, yeah, the whole situation. I think we definitely planned qualifying, but we, we only believed it when it happened. And I think that was mm-hmm. so special that we actually got to do this whole journey together and as a team and, um, yeah, being the underdogs, I think, and accepting that as well. So we had definitely had to pre- prepare more than maybe others, I think. Uh, we had to go there. We went there twice um, for training, tried it on all tides, uh, different winds, uh, good or bad. I think we got it all, and it was, uh, yeah, it was a very special journey with them. That's very cool. And we mentioned it in the intro, you're, you're a veteran competitor. You've been surfing in competitions for years at this point. Was surfing in the Olympics, did it feel markedly different than your other competitive experiences? Or are, are there those same rhythms of like, I'm putting a singlet on, I'm, I'm going out and surfing. Um, I'm curious, I'm curious how, how much different it felt, if it felt different at all. Very different, mm. very different. I think also for me and uh, um, it, it being such a big event for, for Germany and uh, mm. actually German people actually watching the Olympics and watching right. surfing maybe for the first time in their lives. I think that felt uh, very different. Felt like we had a lot of support from people that actually had no clue what what surfing actually is. <laughs> and that was beautiful to see to actually spread surfing and spread this passion and um, yeah, show people that surfing can be a sport also in Germany, also in a country where there's supposedly no surfing. Um, and that I really felt the support from everyone. I felt like people were watching, people were interested, they wanted to know more. And the the event itself, it was crazy. I mean, we were sleeping on a boat on a cruise ship. Right. Uh, we were we were driving around on jet skis and from one boat to the other. <laughs> I mean, having a jersey with my name and number on it, that's a, that's a special thing. And um, yeah, surfing for something bigger than just yourself for a country. I think I really felt that and it was a very, very special moment for me. Thanks for sharing that with us. You referenced it earlier on. So so you come off of the Olympic high of like, this is such a huge platform event. And then rest of the year, you mentioned you didn't pursue the Challenger Series, but you've got the EDP Era Sarah Pro coming up. It's in your you know, one of your home countries of Portugal. And as you said, it, it, you're a bit of a dark horse because you're not there to compete to qualify. You're there with all the familiarity. So once you kind of get through this event, what does the rest of your 2024 look like? Yeah, I have one very, very special event. You mentioned it already. Um, we're going to have the first German national championships in Germany um, in the pool. Um, surf down, Auto Surf Down Rook, it's going to be... A really crazy good event i think um it's gonna bring even more surfing to germany and i think that's very special i've already heard from a lot of people that everybody wants to come and watch the surfing and have a drink in the bar <laughs> <laughs> i think uh yeah i think it's it's gonna be very special and i think um that's that's gonna push surfing in germany a little bit more and i think it's so special that it's also in a year where two german surfers qualified for the olympics I think it's a really big step, and I think uh, I think now Germany can become one of a surfing uh, nation in Europe, and I think that's very special. I'm very, mm. very glad to be part of that as well. 
Awesome. You know, uh, one of the things that we get to do on this podcast um, that's a real joy is we get to talk about the uh, surfboard community. Um, we've been sort of running the Visla CT Shaper rankings last two seasons on the championship tour. You yourself, you're a member of kind of the Visla extended family surfing for Sister Revolution. But I'm curious, w- what kind of surfboards have you been riding this year? Like who, who is your sort of primary shaper at the moment? Yes, I ride uh, Sharp Eye Surfboards. Um, I changed, I, I switched, I think, two years ago. It was a big change for me. I felt like I needed something a bit more flicky, a little bit faster. Um, yeah, just wanted to see what the pros were riding, and um, I instantly clicked for me. Uh, it was I, I think my first board was, um, was um, HD2. Um, mm-hmm. That was my first board, and it worked so well. Uh, it was actually the board that I qualified on for the Olympics, um, that model. And yeah, I love every I love every single board. I have to say, I can't complain. Um, I feel like all of them are magic. All of them mm-hmm. work, and um, I feel set. I feel like there's a line of sh- of shaping there. I feel like I don't have to worry if the waves are bigger or smaller. I feel like mm-hmm. the board is gonna adapt, and I just have to adapt as a surfer. Awesome. Uh, We're going to take a quick break to get a word in from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. This is the Lineup Podcast. I'm Dave Prodan here with Germany's Camilla Kemp. Um, Camilla, where did you come from? You mentioned that you live in Portugal. You're surfing for Germany. Where were you born and raised, and and what was family life like um, when you were younger? Yes, I was um, born and raised in Portugal. I live in a small, well, small, not too small, but in a little town, Cascais, called Cascais. Um, it's very surfing involved here, I think. Um, so I grew up close to the beach. My family went to the beach. We started, my, my bigger brother, older brother, started surfing, and I kind of just went uh, to wherever he was going. I did whatever he was doing. So I quickly started surfing. Um, And I loved it. I fell in love with it. But I think it wasn't until I started competing that I really felt like, okay, this is my, this is my thing. Um, And, and then I never stopped. I felt like that was, that was it for me. I found my passion. I found something that I was good at, something I liked. Um, Yeah. It gave me a sense of um, freedom and, and purpose in life. Um, And I just stick with it. And I, yeah, I competed for Portugal for, um, a lot of years I competed all my junior career was for Portugal and then I switched over to Germany in 2018 I think and yeah I felt like I needed a change obviously with Olympics um, I had a good uh, good environment for to pursue that dream and yeah that actually came true that's uh, yeah that's the, the perfect scenario right there I think a fairy tale came true <laughs> but yeah, definitely. I think I I projected it a little bit. I wanted something a, a little bit more structured. I wanted a support crew behind me, and Germany definitely gave me that and gave me all the everything I needed to become a professional surfer. It's very cool. You know, I'm, I've been around the ASPW cell for a while now, almost twenty years. But I think it was right around 2009. Um, uh, Marlon Lipke. Uh, qualified for the championship tour and you know this is the internet's around but not everyone's as connected as they are today and you know we start getting word we're like oh yeah there's this kid from Germany a goofy footer that's really really good um, he's gonna qualify for the tour and everyone's like what's Germany like I don't what do you and and then you get to know him super lovely guy and he's like oh I, I live in you know Portugal and have surfed there mostly and we come to find that like Portugal has so many waves but um, kind of a similar background to you right where Mm -hmm. you kind of have parents of German and Dutch origin but you're growing up in Portugal and the waves there are so good and there are so many options to get good at surfing and I feel like that community has really developed some amazing surfers in recent years yes yes Uh, me and Marlon have a very similar story I think uh, he also went to the German school here in Portugal Uh, grew up with a very German background but in Portugal uh surfing Portuguese waves. He's a, a power surfer. I feel like I, I, um, he motivates me to be that too. Um, and yeah, I think um, Portuguese waves have everything for a, a surfer. You have waves all year round. Um, the level of surfing is incredible, especially in the female 
surfing right now. I feel like Portugal is one of the definitely one of the European top countries right now. And uh, yeah, you can surf with good surfers all the time, even if it's bad. Everybody's pushing each other, and that's just a cool vibe to be around and to train in. Definitely. That's awesome. You know, there's this great film out on YouTube right now that, that Dry Road presents. This is called Camilla, but it's a very cool kind of bio portrait about you. And, and in it, you're very open about, you know, being sort of blonde haired and blue eyed and, and coming from kind of Dutch German origins and living somewhere like Portugal, you, you stand out and it's, it's not always easy to fit in. But I guess as far as surfing is concerned and, and the surfing community, you know, it is kind of a community of outsiders anyway. So did you ever kind of play other sports? Did you have other activities or once you kind of started surfing, that was the thing for you? I did. I did a bunch of other sports. I played football. I played basketball, played volleyball. I play. I actually went, was in the circus as well, which is pretty funny. The, the circus? <laughs> yes. I did like juggling and, uh, <laughs> and uh, riding monocycles and stuff like that. Wow. <laughs> But once I started surfing, I knew that uh, that was that was it. I feel like surfing has such a it has like the sports in it, but also has a very creative side to it, which I like. I feel like everyone surfs differently, and and it's it's totally fine and it's totally accepted, and everybody can surf the way they want to surf. And I think that's that's beautiful. I think that's a uh, that's what makes this sport so different than others, and maybe so exotic, and people want to check in on and see how it works i think that's so cool and once i found found out about it like I, once i found my yeah once i found my passion i knew that that was it i knew that yeah. that was gonna be my next uh my next couple of years <laughs> and i was very glad that all my, my my parents accepted it that way and they knew that i found something that i was very passionate about and they supported me from day one uh since today so that was very great and very fortunate to have that that's very cool. You know, there are no shortage of people who are attracted to surfing, who take up surfing. There's a very tiny percentage that get good enough to even put on a competition singlet and, and try that. And there's an even smaller percentage of that group that end up making it their career and having sponsors kind of support them. You know, was there a moment for you in your development where you realized yeah, I can do this as a career. This is what I, I want to do. Um, or was it more of a gradual thing for you? It was very natural, I think. Mm. I kind of grew into it, I think. And I had I was very fortunate that I had the support of my parents. And um, surfing is very expensive at first, definitely, to get into it and do all the traveling and everything. Mm. You need the support from your parents. And I definitely had that. Um, and I think, um, yeah, I think you kind of, I, I think I kind of just grew into it. Um, I got used to it. Obviously, I think uh, in the beginning, definitely you kind of, in, you get get some prize money, kind of invested in your own career again. I feel like that was kind of the, the juggle the whole time. But I feel like uh, it's way more than that. It's, it's so many life experiences, friends you make along the way, people you talk to. I think it's so much more than just the sport and, and and the competitive side as well i think it's it's the bigger picture and it, it, i i know that surfing opened so many doors for me and also for the future is going to open so many doors for me um but yeah i wouldn't change it for anything else <laughs> and w we talked a little bit about it but you know you're writing for sister revolution you're writing for sharp eye you're writing for dry robe um, you know, what are some of the other partners that you're working with? And, you know, at this stage of your career, like, what are you looking for in a partner? Because I think when we're all younger, we're kind of like, oh, yeah, any sticker, any kind of support I can get. But as we mature and, and we kind of figure out what part of our careers we want to emphasize, it's easier for us to kind of work with a particular partner to say, I want to achieve this thing. And it's not as vague as it was when we were younger. I'm curious if you've noticed that change in your career, too. Definitely. I think you, I, I always wanted partners that understood my, my background, um, that support my career, that supposed to support my dreams. Um, yeah, I never wanted any partner that would just throw me some cash and make me do whatever. I always wanted just a chance and opportunities. And I feel like, um, yeah, partners like Dry, Dry Robe definitely feel like uh, they support me in that. They, 
know that I'm a German surfer. I need to be warm uh, right. now in the right. pool. But also just, um, yeah, understanding the journey, liking my story, um, and supporting it. I think that's the that's the cool part about these partners we get to work with and these brands is that uh, we get to be our own selves, but um, supporting a brand that supports the same values and everything. I think that's cool. Um, and it, obviously, it, it gives you um, kind of a value, right? It's like, uh, it's like when you work with these brands, you feel like you're yeah, you're valuable to them and you're important and you're special in your own way. And that's just cool. I think that's important when you get to work with these brands uh, that are so big in this industry. That's well said. And I think kind of what we've seen in recent years, too, is it's good to have kind of the brand and personality line up. It's almost essential too that the products work, right? Um, you know, you mentioned sharp eye surfboards and feeling so confident on the equipment. Um, and with something like Dry Robe, it is a product centric company, right? They're making this really essential thing, especially for cold uh, weather climates. H- how long have you been with that company, and and what particular products are kind of your go to day to day? Yeah, we did some on and off um, little campaigns uh, last year, but this year I was very happy to actually sign with them. I really like the brand. I like what they stand for. Um, I like the projects they do. I like the team. I think it's a really cool team and a lot of talented surfers from, yeah, uh, shortboarding, longboarding, everything in between, swimmers. I think it's such a cool team and I think they, yeah, they just support you for who you are and that's just, that's just cool. Um, I definitely love the product as well as a surfer here in Europe, you suffer in the winter and (laughs) get to suffer a little bit less with the, with the dry robes. But I think just the brand itself, it has, um, cool projects. They support you. Uh, if you win or lose, it doesn't matter. They actually do uh, believe in you. And that's just cool to have someone behind you feel like you're not doing it alone. You feel like you're doing it with a family behind you. For sure. And we mentioned it earlier, but they were the huge supporter of, of your film, Camilla. It was directed mm-hmm. by Sebastian Sebas Becta. How did that project come about? And like, why did you want to release something like that? Because it's, it's a very cool, not only portrait of how well you surf in these different ways, but it was just a cool like insight into your, your biography as well. Yeah, I feel like um, I've never really told my story because... Mm. Once I changed uh, nations from Portugal to Germany, I feel like a lot of people just knew my Portuguese side because that's what that's who I was in the surfing world. I was a Portuguese girl. Um, and nobody ever got to see the other side of me, which, um, yeah, I never got to tell my story, I feel like. And once I, 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 I was thinking about doing a movie, maybe a surf movie or anything, but then I thought, why not just tell, tell my story? And... Um, give people a little bit of an insight into maybe a little bit more of my German side and um, dry rope supported it instantly. Sebastian is, he's such a creative um, producer and filmer. It's, it was amazing to work with him and then to kind of combine uh, Portugal as my home spot and my home. And then with my German history and my German family, that German side, I feel like it was, it was me. And I think that was the first time that I actually got to tell my story the way I wanted to. Very cool. Uh, we got a couple more topics to get into, but we're going to take one more quick break to get a word in from our partners. And we'll be right back. All right, we're back. This is the Lineup Podcast. I'm Dave Prodan here with Germany's Camilla Kemp. You know, Camilla, you mentioned the German Surfing Championships. It's happening at a brand new wave pool in Munich in October. Give us some background into the event and into the wave pool. Have you, have you been there before? What's it like? And, and, you know, how are you preparing for this particular event? Yes, I was very fortunate to be one of the first to test the pool and get the settings straight. So um, if the settings are off, you can blame it on me as well. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah, it was very, it was a different experience. We started surfing it when it was still freezing cold. I was wearing a four, a five, four, uh, Mm. boots, uh, gloves, everything. Uh, but it was worth it. Every wave was so perfect and it was so incredible to actually surf in Germany. Um, I think it was the game changer for all of us that tested it for the first time. Um, 
and it's crazy. It's such a good pool. I tried a couple, and I feel like that's one of the best I've ever tried. I think it's uh, incredible technology. I think it actually feels like you're in the ocean. You can create different lines. You can surf different waves. Um, yeah, it's so versatile, I think, and that's uh, amazing for a pool. I think you don't really get that feeling in every pool. I feel like there's uh, a very special feeling to this one, and obviously for us it's got a bit of an emotional feeling as well it's good to be actually surfing in Germany and to competing there um, next month. That's going to be crazy with all the German crowd, German television. Um, yeah, let's hope it's, it's going to be a cool event and, um, yeah, people perform their best. Do you change up your sharp eye equipment, you know, competing, say, this week at Aracera compared to the, the pool? What kind of boards are you going to be running in the pool event? Yes, I do. I surf, always surf epoxies in the pool. I'm actually mm. going to try a carbon board next week, which I'm excited oh, cool. to try. Um, but yeah, definitely epoxy. I feel like the the lighter it is, the nicer the, the, the lines you can draw. Um, and it just feels good. A little bit shorter board, maybe a bit more volume. But this wave actually has a lot of power for like mm. a wave pool. It's, it's sure. actually crazy the, the, the power this wave has. So you don't really need to change up that that much, I feel like. Right. And you mentioned the events. It's at the facility in Munich. And I think a lot of listeners might be thinking like, ah, oh, like, you know, what what are the, sort of the Munich, what's the Munich community going to think of a surfing event? But, you know, there's been river surfing at the Eisbach River in Munich since the early 1970s. So there there is actually a pretty healthy surfing community in Munich, can you can you kind of describe that to the listeners and and what you're expecting from just the people that come out and want to watch the event in uh, in October? There is so there is a big surfing community in Munich. I think Munich is the the surfing city in Germany um, because of the Eisbach. Uh, there's so many river surfers and so many talented river surfers as well. It's crazy uh, the things they do on that wave. Uh, it's really insane and and when they surf when it's snowing, it's <laughs> crazy uh, motivation they must have and it's really impressive I have to say um, when we had the opening of the pool there were so many people there it was full full house everybody was watching the waves excited to see the surfers perform so I'm pretty sure that the German champs are going to be pretty much the same I think it's going to be a full house I think everybody's excited to see the first um, yeah German event actually being surfed in Germany so, yeah, I think it's going to be really good. It's going to be a big show. I think everybody's going to have fun. I think it's going to be, yeah, a crazy event for, for surfing in Germany. And I think it's going to be come, I think it's going to become a regular, regular thing. And, um, yeah, I'm excited to be part of it and be, yes, one of the first to surf it in an, in an, on an event. I love it. Talk to us about the SWOX Empowerment Surf Retreat. This is something that you've started alongside uh, fellow QS campaigner, uh, Carolina Mendez. What is it? Explain that to us. Yeah, so there's a very nice hotel in Edisaira. It's called the Ethos. Um, it's, uh, it's actually a beautiful hotel for people that just want to have a relaxed weekend, um, surf maybe, but also you don't have to, you can just cruise around Idisaida. But this uh, is going to be a week, uh, uh, a couple of days where you can enjoy both, enjoy surfing, enjoy the surfing experience and also have a chilled vacation. I think, um, yeah, the idea behind it is just to share that to women, um, make um, surfing more accessible for any kind of woman, um, young, old, whatever, anything in between. And I think it's a cool idea to just, yeah, just to share experiences, talk about surfing a little bit, talk about life. Um, I think there's so much we can share as professional surfers and um, yeah, show other people. And I think uh, it's going to be exciting, definitely. That's very cool. You've achieved so much in, in a really short amount of time. You're still so young, but you know, you're, you've plenty of experience on the qualifying series you're an olympic surfer you're you're working with empowerment surf retreats so you have your own film out you're working with all these partners you know when you look at the next five to ten years as far as your career is concerned we talked about it earlier you you set a lot of goals every year what are your goals over the next five to ten years that what do you want to achieve in your career 
Yes, I definitely want to, well, my main goal, I have to say, is definitely inspire younger girls in Germany and push the level of surfing in Germany. I think there's so much we can do um, as professional surfers for the next generations. And I think that's been happening so much in the in women's surfing. Uh, we can see these young girls just being incredibly talented, incre incredibly motivated surfing these crazy waves. And I definitely want to be that person to inspire the next generation in Germany. Um, but uh, as as the contests go on and as my active career as a surfer goes on, I definitely would love to qualify for the Olympics again for LA. I think that was such an incredible experience in Paris that I want to relive it again. Um, and I'm going to put all my energy in qualifying again in the next four years. Um, but also I just want to keep doing the qualifying series in Europe do my best I definitely want to win one I got a couple of finals but I feel like my level of surfing and everything has just been um yeah increasing and I feel like I'm ready to to win one finally <laughs> um and go on on the challenger series and try my best surf against these incredible surfers and um yeah show my surfing there I think there's so much so many good waves on the challenger series that you just want to be there enjoy it and uh, have a good time and and perform the best you can. Awesome. Well, I've asked you enough questions. We, we've actually put a feeler out from the folks at, at the lineup pod on Instagram. We got a bunch of questions back for you, but we've, we've whittled it down to our three favorites. Um, first question is from at Noah Purrington, who asks, will wave pools bring out professional surfers from landlocked countries? Of course, you know, you're, you grew up in Portugal, you were able to surf so much in Portugal, but you also have a lot of experience with these wave systems. They're popping up all over the world. You know, do you think that we're going to start seeing um, professional surfers come, come out of these systems? I think so. I think we're already seeing some good examples. I think in the women's side, you see so many girls just, so good in airs, uh, throwing these air reverses like it was nothing. And I think that's what's coming right now. And I think Germany is on the map already. I think that it's, it's going to be an incredible opportunity for us German surfers to get more progressive, uh, learn these, these crazy aer aerials, um, yeah, do all these crazy things. And I think it's going to get going. And um, yeah, we can put that then in the ocean and and in events, I think it's definitely going to push everything. I don't think that um, pools are going to take us away from the ocean. I think surfing is always going to belong in the ocean. Um, but I think the combination of both is what makes a perfect surfer. And to have that opportunity is going to be crazy, a crazy chance to get um, German surfing to the next level. I like it. Uh, next question is from Et Tree Hat J, who asks, where is the best place to get an apple strudel in Germany? <laughs> uh, I think anywhere, actually. <laughs> uh, probably probably from, from the classic German grandma. That's always the best one. But um, I think you can get a good one anywhere. <laughs> probably close to the pool as well. <laughs> It's a good answer. You got to throw a shout out. You got to get some free strudel out of this. Just so I should. I should. You get it from maybe. grandma. You mentioned grandma. Maybe grandma. Exactly. Okay. Maybe someone can get me a good good deal. <laughs> Somewhere <laughs> yeah, in the like city. That. No <laughs> free ads. I'm all for it. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh, last one is from at too cool for Megan who asks, what are you looking forward to in, you mentioned it earlier, but potentially surfing in the Olympics, LA Olympics in 2028? Um, definitely to stay in the, in the village and, uh, be closer to the whole Olympic feeling. We definitely got a bit of it, which was very cool. Um, me and Tim got to go to Paris and experience the whole Paris vibe, uh, the village, seeing all these incredible athletes being part of something bigger. But I think in LA, it's going to be a mix of both, which is going to be incredible. I think to have to compete, but also go and sleep in the village and experience everything on a daily basis. Good answer. And definitely uh, to surf one of those incredible waves, wherever it's going to be. Uh, we don't know it yet, but yeah, I think, um, do, do you LA have a preference? So much potential. Yeah. I think trestles, I think lower trestles, that would be the, my preference. <laughs> Uh, thanks to everyone that wrote in questions at the lineup pod. We're now down to our final segment. This is the lightning round. 
So these are 10 questions for you to answer as quickly as you can. First question. If you could only have one board set up for the rest of your life, single fin, twin fin, thruster, quad bonzer, or finless, which would you choose? Thruster. <laughs> Coffee or tea? Coffee, definitely. Burrito or pizza? Oh, pizza. Last book you read? Oh, I don't read. It's terrible, but I don't really read. Probably one of the school that they ordered me to read. <laughs> uh, best surf film ever? I'm going to say The um, Scratching Surface from mm -hmm. Julian Wilson. I love that okay. one. Uh, what is one wave you never have to go back to? Eisbach? <laughs> In Germany? <laughs> There you go. Uh, if you only get to surf one way for the rest of your life, it can be anywhere. You could dream cast it, perfect conditions, just you and your friends. Which wave would oh, it be? I'm going to say Snapper Rocks. I love that wave. Best person to share a lineup with? Uh, I don't know, but I would love to share one with Steph Gilmore. I would oh. love to see her, see her serve, talk to her for a little bit. <laughs> uh, worst person to share a lineup with? Maybe a stand-up paddle board. <laughs> they catch all the waves from a little bit further out. <laughs> there you go. Uh, last one. Uh, finish this sentence. I will next achieve a state of happiness by... Surfing good waves. Great answer. Camilla Camp, thank you so much for coming on the lineup. Good luck this weekend at the EDP Aracera Pro, and good luck in a few weeks at the German Surfing Championships in Munich. Um, really nice to talk to you and, and been really impressed by your career so far. So good luck um, over the next few months. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.